Do I'm asking how old you are? When did you leave school? Twenty seven. Left school eleven years ago. Right. Yeah. So you're you're a more recent graduate than yeah. than myself. And don't even <laughs> go there. Honest to God, JV. this is such an ageist to- sort of uh, podcast. <laughs> JV left at the age of twelve to go down the mines. He was, he was that old. <laughs> when I was a lad. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, Nathan Thank McDonald. You. Thank you. Can I call you Nath or Nathan? Any. 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 Right, we'll, we'll, we'll go with Nath. <laughs> uh, so for watchers, listeners, viewers, do you want to just introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, a little bit, back, a little bit about your background? Yeah, so I've, obviously I'm, I'm Nathan. Um, I've been in the tech industry all my life since I left school, um, from you know systems, infrastructure, to software development, to how to simplify business processes um i've been in and out of various different industries within the tech world um various different locations as well so i've, 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 I've in the last sort of 11 years i've i've really immersed myself into learning and developing myself um and now my, my main aim is to not only help companies grow through you know technical advances or or technology um like diversity within their business, um, but also how I bridge a gap between more traditional services and offerings, such as the mental health industry, mm-hmm. and, and and how we can digitize that moving forward to make that easier for, for people to, to access and, and quicker. Okay. And you, you're you developing your own product around mental health, which yes. we'll, we'll get into later on, I'm sure. <laughs> But I wanted to start with a question to the room, really, which is uh, there's, there's been a recent strategy which has been launched by the government around yep. making the UK a, a tech superpower, I think is how they describe it. So we're going to be competing with San Francisco and the US and everybody else. Um, and I, I guess I wanted to get a view from from both of you two, actually, in terms of... Looking at you, Nath, first. Uh, po- probably mainly you, <laughs> Nath, yeah, but I'm sure John will chip in as well. Um, so how realistic is it that the UK can become a tech superpower? Because if I look at the UK... Yes, we've got some great tech companies, including ourselves, and I'm sure your your company as well. Um, but we're famous really for banks and old fashioned financial services industries, manufacturing. not manufacturing, not really technology. And I just wanted to start with that. Start with an easy question, then. I, I personally think that a lot of a lot of tech businesses who even start in the UK really want to be based and, and and they get better quality of of skill sets in other countries. So if we look at, say, for example, Booking.com, mm-hmm. which was originally a, a UK-based business. Yep. They're now based in, in Europe, in Amsterdam. Um, you know, you've got your your Facebook, your Google and stuff, which obviously have UK UK arms, but mm-hmm. predominantly they're based in America and and um, in, in various different other countries that their head their headquarters are, I think the European headquarters is Switzerland. Yeah. Um. Now, the the issue with the UK is is for us to to really push that drive for being a technical superpower, a technology superpower. We've got to have the skill set coming out of the education system. Now, I'm about to probably open a can of worms here by by discussing this. I firmly believe that the education system isn't built in the UK to help people move forward with the skill set that they want to move forward with. Um, it's very, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I left school with with a, a, a sports B-Tech because mm. that's all I was interested in. I wasn't interested in maths because it didn't really teach me anything that I'd use on the outside. Um, I spent from the age of 13 to 16 learning how to develop websites, learning how to, to, to play with computers and technology and stuff like that because that's what my passion was and that's what mm. I wanted to get into but I didn't necessarily learn that within the education system do you mind me asking how old you are when did you leave school 27 I left school 11 years ago right yeah so you're you're more recent graduate than yeah than myself and don't even <laughs> go there honest to god JV. this is such an ageist to- sort of uh, podcast <laughs> JV left at the age of 12 to go down the mines. He was, he was that old. <laughs> when I was a lad. I want to offer you a job. Well, not quite. 
But I do want to talk to you about Spectrum Digital. We are a business that is growing. We're an exciting business and we're a business that is looking for top talent. We've got a great team here that are passionate about business, technology and automation. We're passionate about making people's lives easier at work. And we're looking for people that are like-minded to come and join the team. If that sounds like you, then slide into my DMs. Let's have a conversation and I may well be offering you a job. Okay, so yeah, you, you've got more recent experience of, of the curriculum, yeah. I guess, than, than yeah. ourselves. So, so on that then, Nath, is, and I, I, I don't know, and your finger's probably more on the pulse than I, definitely. Are we saying that in Europe and in America and maybe in the Far East that the education is more tailored to maybe tomorrow's jobs and tech being right at the forefront of that? I believe that they have different aspects to it. I mean, I don't personally know because I've never been educated in, in those areas. However, the... The difference is, is that you can either get a, a better skill set from those countries or the same skill set at a cheaper rate because mm. the cost of living in them countries is a lot cheaper. Now, for us to really advance on on what we've got going on and, and the plans to, to, to drive that, that superpower, the government have got to look at how we actually create a country that people can afford and want to live in that's a difference we've got because you know if if you create a, a good skill set those skill sets are going to go and work in or work remotely for for overseas countries or go and work in those countries and then we're going to lose that skill set quite mm -hmm. rapidly because they're paying a lot of money for that skill set whereas because the government haven't really thought about the other impl implications to driving that superpower it's, you know there's, there's other things like cost of living and and bills rising i mean even i've in the back of my mind i'm like when i'm 55 i'm, I'm moving out out of the country and mm -hmm. getting a place in spain and i'll probably have my bills mm -hmm. by doing that um and and that's that's the situation that we're in in the uk that the the the, the infrastructure around that's not not built to, to support that yeah and I, I do agree with you that I think there's a massive <laughs> uphill struggle for the UK to become a tech superpower if that's what we want to become I don't, I don't necessarily think we need a load of developers to achieve no, that though. no I agree development really we can we can ship that offshore what we need is yeah. great creativity great ideas great products like you will come on to later on in terms of your mental health but isn't that isn't that coming we might be a little bit later to the party and yeah america were, were leading it but you know you've got nathan here we had we've, we've had a number of people in recent pods that have you know that it's all around tech and what they're developing and you know looking to push the market ironically again in the health side of things mm -hmm. um and i get the the idea around the fact that education maybe isn't pushing our our kids to to those sort of te uh, you know those sort of um jobs or having no giving them sowing those seeds as as to what and they maybe pick it up through gaming or, or things like that but i think um you know i i just i i just think it's more around uh people just being given the freedom and i, I probably question and I, and I think there's a couple of things one i think the the attraction of going to work out in you know America or, you know, nice warm climb. You've already got, you know, a 25 year plan before you'd be in Spain, living it up. Um, it'd probably be sooner judging by what you were saying to me before we came on air. But, um, I think, I think the living, you know, like you said, the standard of living and you know, what you're doing is one thing, but I think it potentially it could be around has our government been a bit late to, to actually fund and, you know, give people those development sort of funds to, to get ahead because you know we've got c4di up the road it's full of really entrepreneurial tech wizards and i bet in every village in in the country we've got someone who's tinkering around trying to create something mm. it just maybe just that access or the um knowledge of where to get access to funding to actually take it we had was it mark evan smith on who mm. was was talking about um you know investing in startups to, to give them money to do a POC on things to, you know, lose quickly and things like that. I, I think it's more around, you know, money is seemingly tight, but it's actually, we've got to start thinking about where can we invest money and support people to, you know, cause the returns can be really quick mm. if you get 
if you get something on a you know in tech can't it yeah and i think that funding can come from the private sector like like yeah. mark said in terms of getting the big corporates that probably haven't got that digital innovation <laughs> machine going yet you know linking those up with the new startups that have got those those ideas but also come from government as well and giving access to for seed funding to startups with great ideas i guess it's how do you sort the wheat from the chaff in terms of mm-hmm. What are the truly great ideas when it comes yeah. to tech innovation and getting the money to those those ideas? I, I think also there's <clears throat> the, the problem you have, and we've discussed it in, in previous pods around when you've got a government that has got you know often it's it's very short termism, mm. and you know especially this current one it could be very short term. Um, in, in starting something that you're not going to see the reap the rewards of will always hold them back. I think. Mm. Um, which is wrong because actually it should be a bigger play. It should be what was my legacy and my legacy was actually I brought this initiative to the table mm. and other, you know, subsequently other people took it on and, and actually look where we are now. We're, you know, we're in a really you know great mm. place. I, I, th- I think that's part of the problem. You, you, you've only got to look and listen and read in, you know, whatever, you know, media outlets, the people that are not only just running the country, but, that are the face of it, but the people behind it, they're all, I, you know, I, I'd go as far as I say they were probably more self, they're self-interested in certain things rather than that bigger play. And, and I, I think they're probably out of touch. I wonder how many people the age of Nathan or even younger are being um, consulted as to what should we be investing in our education sector to make you go straight from school to do that Nathan's done it on the back of his interest. Mm. That's, I, I think that's where the, the issues lie is actually, you know, at the, at the heart of it, it's actually, um, we haven't got the right people being talked to or, or consulted as to what we need to do to become a superpower. Yeah, we haven't got the right people. We, we haven't got the volume of people as well. If you look at China and India and the US and how many graduates they've got coming out each year, it's just phenomenal compared to the uk and it's, it's difficult to compete it's because again a lot of the tech companies are in those those areas yeah a lot of the headquarters are there um you've got japan who are constantly innovating and and the issue is that they come out the educate ed- education system in those countries prepared for those big companies to, to hire them mm. um whereas here You've then got to spend forty five pound forty five thousand pound on a university degree, mm. which I've had a look at the uh, computer science curriculum and it's it's still outdated. Mm. So you, you're learning skills that yeah you know the the the, the develop the basic fundamentals, but as a software as a as an app developer now, you want to be learning Flutter, which is a, a Google code base. They're learning Laravel and PHP and although it is still fundamental it's it's not the, it's the trend 20 years so yeah. always going to be one one <clears throat> step behind yeah and and we've got we've got to change that aspect but then we've also got to make the country a very very attractive place to live and for these big big tech companies to move into or be created here um you know i don't know if you will know but a computer <clears throat> science degree so they, they teach you how to write code how to yeah. build products is is there an element of that degree which is i guess the creativity the product ownership side of things in terms yeah. of coming up with a great opportunity and a great idea yeah well a, a, a lot of people that, that choose to go down that route are, are te- usually people full of ideas mm. and they want to learn how to develop those ideas now um th- there's there's various different aspects of it i mean i've never personally Done. I've never been to university. I've never done the the, the course, but I've, I look into what the curriculum is because mm. I'm constantly on the lookout for for good developers, um, and I'm constantly wanting to connect with them and, and chat with them. Um, but the, the the main thing that they learn and the, the main thing that that it pushes is problem solving, because you know you can be the you can be the world's best code writer, but if mm. you can't problem solve, you, you can't do the job. Yeah. Um, so that's the main thing that they push. But is is there a is there an aspect of that not being good enough at the minute because they're learning code bases and then they're having to go in their own time to learn the modern trends and 
and stuff like that. And I, I think what went to 10 years ago, they're, they're still continuing now because it's easy to just keep that rather than spend time developing and changing and, and stuff like that. Or maybe the funding doesn't don't allow that or, mm. or whatever else. There's always a, with our government, there's always a stumbling block as to you can't do that. As a as a tech startup, it, you can get funding. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of money in the pot from the government. There's a lot of grants. There's a lot of stuff like that. However, you need to employ somebody to actually go and chase that funding because the forms you have to fill out and 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 the the the, the, the evidence that you have to provide is yeah. is just so long. It's, it it takes ages. And as a tech startup, there's usually one or two people that are part of that, and the full time job is to get this this piece of technology ready, done, and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and ultimately, by the time you you you've launched, you can then look at funding and grants. But ultimately, the, the grants are only allowed whilst you're in in, in development. Yeah, in planning, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. So there's that issue there where I just think the government just needs to really su- support the the companies and the new startups that that are gonna you know, drive this idea of being a superpower. I personally don't think it'll ever happen in my lifetime. I don't think we'll be as big as Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't I don't think we'll be as big as California. I don't think it'll it'll happen in my lifetime. But I do believe that at some point down the line they are they are already planning how to change the infrastructure and how to support more techno- technology advances. Hi guys, just jumping in. I want to talk about one of the services we offer, which is robotic process automation, also known as RPA. That is software that replicates human behavior. So if you've got people downloading spreadsheets, attaching them to emails, going on portals, downloading information, moving data around, all that stuff is perfect for a robot. So if that's interesting, get in touch. Let's have a chat. Let's see if we can help. Enough from me, back to the conversation. So if you were... Uh, minister for education and you were given the job maybe not education but whatever the appropriate ministerial post is um you've given the job of making the uk a superpower making them making us compete with silicon valley and california what would you do differently or what would you do question to both of you so who wants to go first uh yeah i don't want to go first i, I mean i've always I've said this many a time i, I think we're not educating our kids for the jobs of tomorrow so i think i think there's an element of we may be you know we have it here to a from an engineering perspective we have the ron deering technical college where they're preparing kids for the engineering sort of sector and various roles within that i think there needs to be more of that of schools or universities or whatever it it may well be happening i'm not close enough but to, to actually partner with all these tech companies and actually get them to be guiding what the curriculum should be for the next 10 years and then obviously it will evolve i think there needs to be a much closer um correlation between tech business and tech trends mm. and education and, and ultimately i think apart from you know, I take Nathan's point about, well, yeah, maths, but how's that going to help me when I get out there apart from I can count count all my millions? But but apart from that, I, I think we should be looking at um, our educational curriculum being more agile and, and it evolving way quicker. I mean, because let's be honest, most of the subjects that are there now were there back in my time, Steve, thanks very much, and probably our parents' time. Yeah nothing's really changed apart from where we're going to chuck in another different language or, you know, cause back in my day, information technology was basically a DOS lesson. And, you know, we had very basic computers for obvious the time, mm-hmm. but from what my, my lad tells me, yeah, it's, it's massively moved on, but it's still stuff that we do on a day to day basis, PowerPoint and stuff like that. Well, mm-hmm. wow, mm-hmm. not a lot. That's not really going to get you anywhere. So I, I think for me, it needs to be, a much tighter correlation between tech companies, global tech companies, and either governments or educational um, establishments to to work in a much more agile manner as to what we need to be teaching. Yeah, I, but I still think there's a, there's a risk, there's a danger that we focus on the tech. I don't think it's the tech that's the important thing, actually. I think if you look at your, your son's curriculum, or one of the things that your son's school is doing brilliantly is the kind of coffee initiative in terms of, 
business. Taking a product, taking a product and taking it to market. You know, they came to see us and sold the product to us. And and I think that's really where the opportunity is. And that's where we need to focus. If we want to become a, a Silicon Valley because writing code is not going to make us a Silicon Valley. It's having the next Google. It's having the next it's Amazon. It's having that idea. That entrepreneurship. It is. It is. Yeah. The code can be written wherever. It's it, the idea that's the important it's, thing. It's like I've, 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 done, I've done a lot of things with, with schools and colleges in terms of sort of business enterprise days and stuff like that. And, and some of the, the ideas that they have are unreal. I've sat there and gone, I'd that, give, I'd, 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 I, I will give you <laughs> yeah. like... I'll give you money to, to, to go make that idea work. But yeah. unfortunately, they're too young. They can't, they can't do that. Now, all, all that takes from, a, from an education perspective is to notice that and go, this, this child here needs one-to-one coaching on entrepreneurship, business, and how to set, set up business. Mm. Because at school, I was, I was in a, in a different, different realm of, of fantasy whenever whenever a lesson started I, I was I was just in a different world I was looking out the window I was thinking about what I want to do tonight when I get home and and, and stuff like that I was never engaged in, in school and and for me it was because in my head it was like I looked at lesson plan I was like when am I going to need that mm. after I leave school I'm never going to need I'm, I'm, I'm never going to be a, an architect I'm never going to need to find out the area of of five different numbers and five mm. different measurements and for me, it was more right. I don't need that, and I don't know what to do when when I when I get home, and that's to learn what I do need and what I do, what and what makes me tick and drive. And I think for me that that was a real a real positive as to how my brain works, and it helped me consume myself when I left school mm. into what I wanted to learn. And when I consume myself, I just pick everything up and. And that's it. And so do you think then, Nathan, <clears throat> what we should be teaching our kids is more, um, I, I take your point around entrepreneurship, but mm. more independent thinking. Yeah. As in, do you know what? I've got a passion for art, for technology, for I, I want to run a business. Don't know how to yeah. do it, but help me. Rather than at the moment, and I've mentioned all the generational things, we, we're just like sheep, right? You've got mm. to do this. You've got to do that. Rather than actually, mm-hmm. you're sitting there thinking, I'm wasting my time here. Yeah, yeah. Because when I get home, I'm going to learn what I want to learn, and then it will. I'll yeah. become, you know, I'll have the passion to to do whatever it t- takes to be successful. Yeah. Whereas at the moment, and, and maybe that's it. Maybe that actually is it. It's just giving them the freedom and and the the foundation. You know, the maybe the the scaffolding, if you will, to build what they want to be. Now, some are going to be like, oh, I don't want to do anything. But with a little bit of you know mm. coercion or, or or encouragement, probably the better word, mm. a bit of encouragement as to well, when you're sitting in a class that you're not enjoying, what are you thinking about? Well, I'm thinking about this. Or I'm thinking about that. Well, what part of that's you know? And then do that, uh, you know. But but at, at the moment, if well, what I experienced when I was at school, it might have changed in the last eleven years. But the person that that doesn't engage with the class and the person that doesn't want to be there because the 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 they're thinking about what they want to do their class is a disruption and they're, they're actually punished for that yeah whereas in reality what it, what it takes is just take them out of that room mm. and start speaking to them about yeah start engaging with them about what they actually want to do because clearly they don't want to be in in, in that lesson and ultimately every, every every subject has its basic fundamentals to move you on in life like you can't get anywhere without you know adding and subtracting numbers you 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 can't get anywhere without learning basic english literacy and, and and stuff like that but ultimately if if a child isn't engaging in in in, in a class there, sh- there shouldn't be see if they, if they are being really disruptive and they are causing problems and yeah but they shouldn't be punished for for, for just being elsewhere mm. it's because their mind's probably ticking over about like like what i was what do i want to do where do i want to be is this going to help me? No, therefore I'm not going to engage. Find their passion. Uh, and that's the thing, isn't it? it it's, yeah. it's it's a it's a, a blanket generic response. Oh, Nathan in the corner is like yeah. staring out the window. Right, let's get him out. Not why is he staring out the corner? And yeah, what yeah. can we do to either get him back into this room or give him another room and get you know let him yeah. spend this time on something that he wants to 
learn more about because you might say, do you know what? Just give me a computer in the corner. I'm happy days. I'll, I'll crack you, or yeah. it'll be something else. But yeah, I, I just think that there's that. But um, I, you know, I'd, we're stuck in a system that yeah. is, you know, it's like a lot of things in our country. You know, the NHS. It's it's just inherently. It's a slow moving beast. Yeah. But then China, India, and America are bigger than us. They're, they should be slower than us as well, but they, they don't seem yeah, to be. Yeah, but they're more, um, they're more sort of, each state's kind of like an independent mm, true. Yeah. thing. So they can be a bit more agile and then under a bigger thing. But we're probably the size of only a couple of the smaller states, aren't we? Yeah. So. All right. So we've talked about product and innovation and ideas, etc. And I'll segue on to your product innovation ideas. So, Talk to us about the, the kind of app, the product that you've been building. Yeah, so um, the the product's called Mindstart, um, and 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 the 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 base of it is to revolutionise the, digi- the digital mental health industry and prevent long waiting lists for mental health therapies. So so what it allows you to do is to have private practice therapists or freelance therapists that are all vetted, they're all qualified to do to do what they offer um, on a system where they would get referrals for for users who, who need mental health therapy. And ultimately the goal is to provide therapy within 48 hours of sign up for a user. And and the reason why I chose that KPI was when I was working in crisis intervention services um, in the area, um, in mental health, every phone call I was having, every every person I saw face to face was like, "I'm waiting for therapy." I was like, "How long are you waiting for? Two, three, four, five months?" And this is crisis. The, the, these are people that are in and out of crisis every every I he was say every day. Weeks and I was wincing, and, every and then day. he said months. Wow. Yeah, people haven't had a phone back, a phone call back from from mental health services for months some people are waiting weeks some people wait months a couple of people i spoke to was waiting years at one point um because of covid mm. um now the issue is is that the ind- the mental health industry is so traditional it's run by it's pretty much powered by charities that have limited funding they rely on donations now as much as people don't want med- medical or healthcare to be privatised, there's got to be an aid of private companies that are looking to innovate within the industry that can provide a, a better service than what's currently out there. Now, what we're planning to, to, to do is, is is allow the users to obviously access therapy with, with no subscription. So that they don't pay monthly, they don't pay yearly. Um, they pay per session, um, and, and currently the the competitors on the market are charging users a lot of money per month, which is unsustainable in in this climate of mm-hmm. cost of living. Um, so so they pay on demand, and the and, and what we're doing is we've 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 backfired the subscription service, so the therapist would pay a subscription to be on the platform to get referrals, to fill their diaries, to ultimately earn their money, um. So that's how that's how we're doing it, and everything's within the app. So the, the sessions are held within the app via video. Oh wow! Okay. Um, the the payments are held within the app and, and using payment gateways. Um, so everything's with, within within this one solution. So this is a, a completely privatized service that the NHS yeah. is not not involved. No. Not so, okay. Makes sense. No, it's, it's completely privately funded. Um, there's a there's a group of local investors, including myself, in in the system. Um, it, again, it's it's getting out there, and then as as we move along, the subscriptions will fund mm. the further development of, of the system, and and you know we're, we're not looking to launch a system and that's it, that's all you're getting. We're looking to continue development in the future and and push on to to be the the mental health system. And this isn't just around. This isn't just local. This isn't just UK. You, you're no. going yeah. global straight off the bat. Our our five year plan is to touch every single country in the world, our five-year plan. Um, our, our, main, our main goal is to access Japan. There's a very, there's a very big shortage of, of therapists in Japan, um, but a lot of demand from, 
from users. So our 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 aim is to try and find Japanese speaking therapists from other countries oh, okay. to cater for 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 that that country, and and ultimately. The, the way that we're working is we're hitting the English speaking countries first so that therapists can work with people all over the world. They're not just, mm. they're not just pulled UK people. If they're UK therapists, they can, they can work with people so, from the US and Australia. So Nathan, so if I, I go to the doctor, you know, we diagnose, I've got you know a, a mental health issue and <clears throat> I need to, you know, I, I need to see a therapist. Um, can my, can my doctor refer me? What's the what's the the method of that? Because I, I suppose there's a there's a, a twin win here, if, mm. if if you like. In as one, the people that can't afford to pay for that sort of support can stay in the NHS system and hopefully yep. get um, support quicker. Because the people that can afford it and are willing to pay for it can go via your app mm. and then start getting it quicker than yep. they would if they're waiting in there. So. I go and see my, my GP and he's like, right, John, you know, you've got two options here. One is you wait in the NHS, you know, waiting list and for as long as, it, it, you yeah. know, you've it, given examples of. Or I could, or he says you can go on this app and, you know, you can get access to it tomorrow, if you will. Yeah. Um, how how do I get, ref- uh, or, you know, when I get told that, what what's the means of getting to, to your app? So the, the the sign up process is going to be very simple. Um, you register your details. We don't take all of your personal details. We don't need your personal details. All we need is name, number, email, city you live in. We don't need all all your addresses or anything like that. Language you speak. That that'll be when we start pushing okay. out of English speaking countries. Okay. Um, but. It's it's a very simple process. So you sign up with, with, with your personal details. You then get an onboarding questionnaire, which goes through your background, mental health. You know what you're struggling with, um, what you feel is is best a best outcome for you. We we take all that data that you put in that onboarding questionnaire, and we we we've, we've created an innovative piece of technology which then matches you to the best therapist for you reaching your goal and and, and solving them them problems. Um, so, so we, we do all that in the background. Now, in our long-term plan is to start making waves with um, corporate insurance companies, so life insurances, medical insurances, so that we can provide our service to customers of those insurance companies for free. And we are looking at, at making waves with Public Health England and the NHS to, to hopefully mm. push down a... A funded NHS route as well, mm. um, but those things take take a long, long time, and you've got to have a, you've got to go through a lot of loopholes to, to actually even get a conversation. So, and what about private sector businesses? Because more and more you're seeing people offering gym membership and healthcare yeah. insurance and all. Is this is that something that private sector businesses could yeah. subsidise within within the first um, twelve months? We're we're planning to. Um, launch a, a corporate scheme yeah. so you can onboard your employees um, and you'd pay a bespoke fixed price per month or per year and you can onboard all your employees and your employees can actually receive free ther- therapy right. um, depending on what they need because um, obviously different therapies cost different like your, your standard CBT is about 50 to 60 pound an hour you, your high intensity is you're touching 85 90 pound an hour and then right. your, your more intense psychotherapies are like 125 in, in some cases can be uh, costly yeah. yeah so what what we're planning to do is 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 when we develop that package is develop a, a set amount of therapists that are happy working for a fixed price at our side Mm-hmm. And then we can go out to companies and go right. We can offer you the, the, the these therapists for our employees, and you pay a fixed fee, and and, and we pay them a fixed fee, and then right. you can have that. Well, your employees can can take that free of charge or salary subsidy or whatever. Yeah, okay. I'm sure there's um, and it's a really boring question, so <laughs> forgive me. Um, I, I, and I'm sure there's a, a straightforward <laughs> answer. So obviously, what what you said is you're you're targeting um, English speaking countries, but yeah. obviously we've got 
the UK, we've got America, just as three simple examples, and Australia. So they're covering the whole globe. Yeah. Um, and there's there's that you know that horrible acronym GDPR and things like that. So with the, I give you all my sort of mental health yeah. data, but you're you're crossing the whole globe, and I'm guessing there's all sorts of different sort of um, policies that you have to abide yeah. by. How do you how do you migrate or not migrate? How do you manage that that yeah. sort of? So so we've 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 instructed a, a legal company on on the best policy for that uh, before obviously prior to launch. Um, so we're looking at that from from a legal perspective and getting all the, the I's and the, the I's dots. And, yeah, yeah. And T's crossed. Um, and it must be a minefield. Yeah. So like in certain countries, you have to hold the data in certain certain areas certain countries so obviously uk you have to hold it within europe yeah um along with all the other european countries in the us you have to hold the data in the us um so what f- from a technical perspective what we've done is we- we've opted for for a, a cloud solution where we can actually spin up multiple different um servers that all operate off a database and when they do put in their their country when they sign up, that'll then spin that's that. That's where it resides. Yeah, that's where that data will, will sit. Yeah, be an easy answer. So is this, was this your concept, your idea? Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. when did you have this idea? About October last year. Oh, okay. Um, so October last year, I, I, I spoke to one of my good friends um, who's within the industry as well. Um, and... So I said to him, I said, look, we've got these issues here. You know, it'd be good if there was a digital platform. Well, there already is. However, it's costly for the user. It's it's it has its own user issues with with like we said, handling data and and accessibility. Um, so what I came up with was a, an idea of it's not an innovative idea. But the technology behind it makes that innovative, mm. and it helps pave the way for a faster response service. Um, but then also, the main idea was we don't share your data, we don't mm. sell your data to any other services apart from what we need mm. at our end to, to run the service, and we don't charge the user a, a subscription that we can't afford on a contract that's unrealistic. Mm. Um, and yeah, so I came up with the idea in October. I told my friend about it, and and he told me to to, to crack on. He said it, it's a great idea, and then ultimately that you know my friends have come on board, and and he's a, he's a shareholder of, of of the business, and um he's pushing us into into all these different so, sports companies. And- me again. Okay, I want to talk about another process that we often get asked to automate, which is the processing of sales orders. So think about a sales order coming to an organization. Often it's in a PDF or attached to an email. We're using capture technology to extract the information from that sales order. We're checking what products are on there. We're matching it up against a database to say, do these products exist? We're checking the customer name to say, does this customer exist? We might even check the pricing to make sure the pricing is accurate. If all of that matches, then again, we could just push it straight into an ERP system or a finance system and nobody has to touch it if there are issues with it if there are things that don't quite match we just push that to somebody to manually review and check but ultimately again we're pushing it into an erp or finance system it's all about making your life easier it's about making your team's life easier and it's about getting cash into your organization quicker and more efficiently hopefully that sounds good if it does then get in touch let's have a coffee and a chat enough from me back to the podcast so all this stuff. I'm intrigued by the journey because I reckon there's loads of people that have <laughs> ideas about oh, it'd be good to do this business. <laughs> and you're one of the very few that have taken that idea and actually done something about it. So yeah. from, from October last year to thinking I've got this idea and speaking to your mate and him going, yeah, I think it's a good idea too. What, what's the journey been between now and then? So the thing is with, with, with me and how my brain works, if I've got an idea, I've got to work on it. Mm. I have loads of ideas every day of stuff that, can change the world and I'm like no, I need to calm myself down a little bit because I'm going to end up a busy fool if I mm. carry on um, but this idea was it was different it was something that I was like 
actually, yeah, this this is this is a really good idea. And so, so when I came up with the idea and had the chat, it's, the journey was my initial my initial journey was what's on the market already, what are they doing? I signed up as a user, I signed up as as other other ways, um, and it was tracking what they what they're doing and how long it takes and the issues that I had as a as a user and and this that and the other and it was like right how can we streamline that make that better make that faster make that do this make you know oh, it'd be good if it did this um so so the, the the initial the initial journey was was market research and then it was looking into how do we develop the system to actually achieve our goals we have had to consult legal teams accountants to go this is doable um and plan the technical side of it so where the database is going to be how big we need the databases and we've, we've developed a solution that, that flexes upon our growth so it's it's actually key scalable. for us yes yeah, scalable yeah. um and then starting the development of the, of the the project so the initial part of that was finding the, the right solution the right code base to, to work for us and our scalability in the future so we're, we're building it in flutter okay and so are you, are you building it yourself you've got team people doing I'm, that i'm building it myself on an evening in the back bedroom <laughs> <laughs> and where are you at and how far are we from launch um so we set i think it's 38 days until we we publicly launch it right now um, very precise. You've, well, you've there's, a, there's a on, there's on your a website. Countdown. There's a countdown. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Nothing like <laughs> you completely gun. nailed your flag to the mast or whatever the phrase is. Um, I work better under pressure. Like right. I, I like pushing myself, challenging myself. Um, so we've got we've got a web app nearly ready. Just a few tweaks here and there, but that does all the fun, all the main functionality now of, of what we intend it to, to do, and then. Obviously, the, the beauty of Flutter is that it can it can hold iOS and Android apps within one code base. So right. we're spinning up the, the iOS and Android app at the moment, and we're currently batting back with Apple because Apple like we need these fundamentals to be met. We we, we complete them and they're like oh, we need these now, and it's like so so it's probably going to be about 15, 20 days of backwards and forwards with Apple. But as soon as it launch launches, it's 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 open to the public and we can have users and, and therapists on there and start delivering sessions so, so it's you know because if you look at it we're, we're coming up to month six that you've gone from an idea to yeah. you mm. know um you know on a, a, a finished product or very close to a finished product um and i'm conscious of the fact that you like working to tight deadlines as you as you've just um outlined um how are you getting your network of consultants or, or count, not consultants, counsellors? Because in my head, I'm thinking, so you, it's a seven and a bit month project to, from, you know, idea to building it. Yeah. But on the, you know, and you're doing it, you know, of an evening in your back bedroom. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you still need to find, you know, yeah. a, a, a massive tranche of counsellors with various skill sets around the world. How are you doing that? So we're so we're doing vast marketing campaigns, and we're st- we're starting them in full force, um, prior to our launch. Um, but at the moment we're we're building the social medias, we're engaging with, with counsellors, we're 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 pushing ourselves out there. We, we've had we've had a number of pre registrations already, and um, so counsellors that are actually actively engaging with us and and willing to jump on our platform as soon as it launches. Um, we've had a few, well, a high number of, of counsellors and therapists actually jump away from a competitive product to have a look at ours and and are in the plans of jumping away from that product for good and coming to ours based on what we've, we've showed them so far and what we've seen. And and the, the way that the way that I'm doing it is, is, is very different. So as, as a user signs up at the moment, with with any any digital company to sign up, the, the data gets held for ages, and then when they're ready to launch, they, they ring them and they go, "Do you want to pay us to, to be part of this platform?" As soon as that user registers with us, I'm jumping on a demo call with them and I'm showing them exactly what stage we're at, and 
and what they expect to see and, and be able to do on the system and, and, and they love that because it's a bit of it's an actual personal touch mm. away from the tech side because what I didn't want to happen is obviously councillors are very people focused people Um what I didn't want to happen was we become a tech business where people just register and, and it becomes a conveyor belt of they're a number rather than a person yeah, mm. yeah so at this stage when it when it is it is possible for me to, to still manage that that timeline and and manage the appointment booking it I'm, I'm spending time with them and I'm going through what they expect to see and and, and our dreams and aspirations and, and they all love that mm. I, I imagine this type of platform it, you need a certain critical mass mm. volume of both yeah uh clients I guess and counselors to, to be able to kind of do that matching process is that yeah is that fair? Yeah. And how, yeah. how do you, how do you reach that critical mass? So it, it, it's quite interesting. I had a bit of a, I had a meeting with, with somebody um, a few weeks ago and, and that was one of the questions that they brought up and I, I didn't quite have the answer because the the answer for the user side is not, not going to be guaranteed. Like we can't mm. just say, right, we're going to have this many users on. Um, all that, all that we can do is just pump money into actual engaging marketing campaigns and get the users on board mm. but the difference is is we're going to be looking at why users mm. are wanting to join our system and and managing that data and actually engaging those people that, that are within that criterion the reason why they're going to look at digital therapy and private therapy is because the current system is is too long to wait for and they're in and out of crisis and they need mm. to need to get that service to, to help them and, and Nath, is, is that a worldwide issue or is it a uk issue in in, in as much as you know obviously you, you live here so you've got a, mm. a, a fairly strong knowledge i would assume of the time it takes as, through the experience you had when you were you were helping at mind etc but forgive me how do you know what it's like in america or australia mm. or Mexico or whatever, how do you know what the the lead time is before you get to see a counsellor? So in obviously it's it's public stats. Right, um, okay. so the twenty twenty stats got released um the beginning of last year um in terms of response times for mental health. And I wouldn't say it's a it's a global issue because not every country experiences these these issues, but there is maybe seventy five percent of countries that, that experience long waiting times. Really? In America, there's there's a there is a requirement for it. However, the waiting times aren't as bad as the UK because it is private based. However, the private services in America are, are very expensive. Whereas us, like for example, you could get matched with a UK therapist charging fifty pound an hour. Now, if you convert that into into dollars, that's forty five dollars an hour. Whereas the the, the insurance companies in America would charge double, treble that. Yeah, yeah probably um, not. So that's mm. that's where we would we would benefit. In some countries, we we own the market by financial dominance, and in some countries, we'd own the market by ease of service and, and and speed, and and that's where we've we've sort of come up with 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 the plan to to go global. The marketing sounds expensive, if you don't mind me asking. It, it, it will be very expensive. <laughs> so, yeah, so are you looking for funding? Have you got funding? What's that situation look like? Um, so, we're, as I said, we're, we are privately funded. Um, we've got enough funds to, to, to run campaigns for, for a year. And then we're going to... So the idea of, of, the, of the business is we're going to reinvest the cash that, that we're making in the first year into growing and expanding and, and constantly expanding um everybody on board's in no rush for for, for a payday mm. <laughs> so it's all about how do we make this business sustainable and how do we reinvest and, and keep growing i mean we are we're open to, to to people who maybe want to jump on board or you know invest or speak to us about it um however at this moment in time we've got a plan on on how to do that without any more cash coming so in, to both, coming into open the to both options. I yeah, say. yeah. I think it, I think it sounds like a great idea, and it sounds like I'm sure there's a market there. Yeah, um, and I'm sure there's people listening to this that think actually, yeah, 
I'm looking for an investment and that sounds like a good one. So um, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> good. All right. Well, I think I'm done. Is that any more Not questions? Really, I'll ask you a normal question at the end of oh, this. Oh, I do. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You, you're Safety. showing me up, JB. So, um, so the podcast is called Tomorrow's Workplace today. So we always ask the guests, or we normally ask the guests, <laughs> uh, cash, cash your mind forward 10 years. Yep. What does tomorrow's workplace look like? And yeah, give, give us your view. What does it look like in 10 years' time? I hate these questions. It's like when you're in a job interview and you go, where you do can't you be wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't be wrong because no one's going to check it in 10 years' time. So, um, I, I personally think we'll we'll have a generation of people, well, we already do have a generation of people that, that care more about their well-being and health than they do financials. Um, so at the moment, what, what companies are struggling with at the minute is retaining staff. Well, companies that, that aren't innovating within the areas of health and well-being and focusing on that within their employees, they're struggling to retain staff and ultimately those staff are leaving for, for jobs that do care and do support those areas. Um, and what I found when I was in, because I, I did a bit of uh, technical recruitment as well, um, was a lot of people were leaving for less paid jobs because they actually was within a job that, that cared more. Mm. And ultimately, in 10 years' time, I think we'll have a generation of people and a generation of companies that, that focus on that more than anything else within the business. And I think what will happen is, is obviously, businesses have to be profitable, but how do you get profits? You, you get profits by retaining good staff and and supporting them in a way and motivating them in a way for them to work hard and, and, and get those profits. And we're coming out of a, of a generation of companies that care more about the profits and do about the staff because there was there was people to, to replace. You know, we're not going to hide away from that. Yeah. Mm. But now there isn't. And there's, there's, there's such a drought on the market of nearly every, every skill set especially in this country, we're going to have a, a completely different workplace of everybody's going to be supported, everybody's going to, going to be, and I'm sure that is in, in, in some companies at the moment now, but I think every company will look at that and go, this is where I need to innovate and it's going to be health and well-being. That's, that's a great answer. Brilliant I mean, answer. I completely agree with you. Nathan, thank you for coming on. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. Thank you.